Steelers keeping their playoff hopes alive last night in Big Ben's likely final game in front of the home fans in Pittsburgh. Did throw one touchdown pass. Got a ton of help from the defense. They picked off Baker Mayfield a couple of times. They sacked him nine times. Najee Harris went for 188 yards and a touchdown. Steelers still have a chance to make the postseason, just a 7% chance. Last night, though, was all about Big Ben. He talked about taking that final knee. You know, anybody in football will tell you when you're on offense that that's the best play in football, the best formation, the best best play. And so to go out there and take a knee made it probably even more emotional and more real. And um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't pretty. But I, like I, I said out on the field, I think that's kind of been feels like that's been my style. Not pretty, but finding a way to win. And I think that's 92 wins here at Heinz Field. And that just that's what it's always been about for me is winning football games. And um, this is one more, and it's very special. A deeper look at uh, the home dominance for Ben Roethlisberger. The most wins by a quarterback at a single venue. And Tom Brady has the most at one stadium, Gillette Stadium, with 135. John Elway at mile high with 104. And Ben Roethlisberger, 98 at Heinz Field at building opening in 2001. Bring in Charles Davis for more on Ben Roethlisberger. Charles, I mean, you, you look at the numbers. He threw it 46 times for 123 yards. He, he's nowhere near the quarterback that he once was, but it seemed pretty clear there was an inspired effort from his teammates and from that grateful fan base, didn't it? Absolutely, and don't forget, this is a team that still has playoff aspirations, and with that organization, they're not going to just let them go. It's not just Mike Tomlin getting his 15th consecutive non-losing season which I think is the best start ever for, for a head coach in the NFL. It's still playing to try and get into the tournament, as a lot of players talk about. But when you put it all together, let's, let's, let's not underestimate, as you pointed out, the inspiration that these guys had, wanting to send their quarterback out the right way. If anyone ever has any questions about a quarterback and how a team feels about them, all they got to do is plug in last night's tape. You found out how this team felt about their leader, Ben Roethlisberger, because they got they got contributions from everywhere. The defense, nine sacks, as you pointed out, two interceptions. Baker Mayfield hit 11 times. They didn't give up 100 yards rushing. Prior to that, they'd given up over 200 yards rushing three straight games, three out of the last four games. So they played well on offense. How about Najee Harris, 188 yards, looking like a young Franco Harris, whose record he broke for rookie rushing. So put it all together, they obviously played for their quarterback and leader. They also played for the chance to have a big game against Baltimore this weekend in hopes of still getting in to the tournament. Yeah, if they win that and the, and the Jaguars can pull off a big upset against the Colts, the Steelers would likely be in the postseason. That's a big if. That's why Sportsline says it's only about a 6.6% chance. Now, Baker Mayfield, you mentioned, sacked nine times. He was a mess, picked off a couple of times. He, he's injured. He's, he's not going to play in the in the season finale because he's going to have to undergo surgery on his shoulder. This is a, a big moment uh, for, for his career and for the Browns in that franchise. What, what do they do at quarterback uh, ahead of his potential fifth-year option? Yeah, there's a whole lot going on here because yesterday, I believe I said they hadn't picked up the fifth-year option. I did some investigating. Chris, you're going to have to help me. I think that they actually did. So now we got to figure out, is he the guy going forward after this year that you're going to pay that kind of money to be your starting quarterback? That's what's going to be the discussion because if you took it into if you took it from last year about midseason through the postseason, there's no question they were on the right track and Baker Mayfield was the guy. This season, so many different goals not met by the team overall, but in Baker's defense and in his favor, a toughness to him, a grittiness to him, played hurt always shows up, answers the call. I think what's interesting is this off-season discussion, is he the guy, not the guy, is actually in his favor. Because the Baker Mayfield I know, and I've known him since he was a freshman at Texas Tech, he doesn't have a chip on his shoulder, Chris. He has a boulder that Sisyphus tried to push up the hill, okay? Mm -hmm. That's when he operates at his best. When he's doubted, when people criticize, when people say he's not the guy, that's when he's at his best. He'll have to be next year because they got some big decisions to make. Last thing, this is not the draft, I think, that he has to worry about in terms of quarterbacks coming out. I don't think there'll be a major rush like there was last year to go get these guys, but he has to show that he's going to be the guy long-term in the season coming forward. Yeah, they picked up that fifth-year option last April. 
thinking maybe, you know, he performs well this season. Maybe he gets that long-term deal before going into that fifth year. But it certainly appears like he's going to have to earn that contract and maybe an extension with that uh, with that play next season for the Cleveland Browns. And it, it feels like there's more pressure on him and the Browns as it pertains to the quarterback position because, you know, you look across the division and, and across the state at what Joe Burrow is doing with the Cincinnati Bengals Burrow and Chase, I mean, they're developing like a, a Montana Rice type connection here. How much do you think that plays into what the Browns are going to do moving forward? It plays into it in a big way. And you mentioned within the division, Lamar Jackson's in Baltimore. Okay, Pittsburgh's the one that has to answer some questions. But this Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase thing, obviously it goes back to LSU. Remember during the run up to the draft, the big debate was. Should you get a left tackle to help protect, protect Joe Burrow, who had torn his ACL in his rookie year? Panay Sewell was the name most mentioned coming out of Oregon. Or do you add another weapon to go along with T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd at wide receiver? They chose the weapon. And then, of course, Jonah Williams made him look good at left tackle by having his best season yet. But when you put it all together with these two, it's not just a matter of Jamar Chase is fast and Joe Burrow meets him with a pass. It's understanding each other. It's playing through some confidence dings, some drops by Jamar Chase. Joe Burrow never shied away from it. And when Joe Burrow makes a second and third reaction play in the pocket, Jamar Chase knows how to adapt, adjust, and find his way open. And those two, that's a heck of a connection. So back to the draft day, Chris. <laughs> Duke Tobin in, in the brass at, at Cincinnati, they got it right. Not that Panay Sewell isn't a terrific player. But they got what they wanted because look at the season T. Higgins is having over a thousand yards. Tyler Boyd has a chance to go over a thousand yards. Joe Mixon rushing the football over a thousand again. I think Jamar Chase helps open things up for everyone. And already clinching the division, they're going to get at least one home playoff game. They take on the Browns, who will not have Baker Mayfield in the regular season finale. Biggest game of week 18, though, Sunday night, Chargers and Raiders. It's a virtual play in game for the postseason. Another off-field issue for the Raiders this week. It's been a, just a, one thing after another, right? Starting nickel, Nate Hobbs arrested for DUI. You've had the Raiders a lot. You had them you know, before the John Gruden situation came about, before the Henry Rugg situation came about, and then again after. How have they kept it together on the field when things off of it have been such a mess? Well, I think it starts with you've got to look at the locker room itself, and this is where Derek Carr probably should get a lot more you know, a lot more love about what he has done there. Because, you know, how many years have we talked, Chris? Is Derek Carr really John Gruden's guy? Is he really the right guy for this job? And every year he puts up nice numbers, but they don't pay off with the playoffs. This one could have easily gotten away from them. And I get the sense that he just wouldn't let it happen. He kept this team going in a lot of ways. Other guys have jumped up and given better contributions lately. All of a sudden, Josh Jacobs has emerged. He's one of the top runners when he's right. Finally got over 100 yards, 129 in the last ball game against Denver. So now we're starting to see that happen. The defense, which has been better all year long than it was before, again, starting to put pressure on quarterbacks led by Gus Bradley, the defensive coordinator. But when we talk about what's gone on there, and we use the word distractions, and not, and not you, Chris, but a lot of people on the outside, when you say distractions, you're not even coming close to what's gone on at that place. We're talking bona fide tragedies that have happened there. We're talking about things that are ending up in, 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 in criminal court. And we're talking about lives in the balance and lives lost. This is amazing that they are in this position in terms of on-field play, considering what has happened off-field. So I never want to get short shrift to that because that's real world stuff. But if we're talking strictly football terms. If they get in, make sure you point a good finger at Rich Bisaccia, the interim head coach, and at Mike Mayock, the general manager. In tandem, in lockstep, they kept this team moving in the right direction, and this team's responding for Rich Bisaccia now. And they're one win away from getting into the postseason. In some cases, maybe one tie away from getting in as well, but that's uh, that's for another day. On, on the oh, don't throw that one out there. <laughs> crazy yeah it could be a situation where you know if the teams tie if, if you guys don't know watching if the teams tie they could both get in but that nobody's did, gonna did, do that no, no put, coach is gonna put agree that in the that. atmosphere where one's gonna receive the kick and they'll just kneel down and then hand the ball to the other and they'll kneel down and we'll go through 60 minutes and overtime imagine that oh imagine calling that game uh on the other side though it's the chargers right and the, and the team that you know we expected to be in the postseason this year with justin herbert how important is this game for last year's Offensive Rookie of the Year, Herbert in particular, who now, I mean, you, you, could, you could argue he's 
the second best quarterback in his draft class behind Burrow. Yeah, and, and look, remember, he, Burrow, and Tua, Tunga Valoa, will be in lockstep together as long as they're in the league because of where they went in the draft, one, five, and six. So put it all together now for Justin Herbert. It's not as important within his own locker room because they truly believe in him. They think he's the guy. But I will tell you, having talked to at least two top personnel people around the league, independently, after they lost to Houston, I heard this quote, and I'm paraphrasing for both, but essentially this is what they said. Joe Burrow doesn't let his team lose a game like that. So that's the outside perception. I think this kid is built of steel a lot more than what people know. And this is a great opportunity for him to change that perception from the outside world. But yes, he's a gorgeous thrower of the football, but Joe Burrow has that so-called it factor that that has taken the Bengals to an AFC North title. It's a great opportunity for Justin Herbert to join him and let people know that that it factor is there. And I believe that it is, he's got it. Win or lose this ball game, I think this kid has it. But I'm just telling you, Chris, talking with people around the league, just a couple of people who are pretty highly placed. That's how they felt. So it's a very interesting deal to see how Justin Herbert and his team finishes this thing off. Yeah, interesting stuff. Chargers, Raiders for the right to go to the postseason Sunday night. Charles Davis with us here on CBS Sports HQ ahead of his final regular season game of the season. These are the week 18 matchups beginning on Saturday with the Broncos hosting the Chiefs and the Cowboys taking on the Eagles. Two Saturday games, and then on Sunday, Ravens-Steelers. It's the one Charles is going to be on the call for, 1 o'clock Eastern time on CBS. Both teams still alive in the playoff race. The winner will have a chance, but definitely going to need the Jags to upset the Colts if they're to get in. Rams uh, trying to win the division. 49ers trying to get into the NFC postseason, the wild card there. And that Sunday nighter is Chargers-Raiders or potentially that last playoff spot. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.